Konnichiwa, Rokuri Tachi here, and welcome back to the Race to 100 for October. So, as you know, Race to 100 is technically finished. Everything else now that I show you that I have been watching is after 100. So, let's move on to show number 101. Power corrupts, and when it appears that the once noble Queen Claudette's ways have turned to oppression and heretical persecution, it's up to a new generation of warriors to step up to the plate armour to bear arms and bear their naked fury in open rebellion. Though the odds may seem unfairly stacked in favour of the Amazonian ranks of the Queen, doubly supported by her power of writ and assassins, the incredible wits and assets of the dazzling array of daring damsels willing to risk their gorgeous skins and put their liversome bodies on the line against her might just expose a few unexpected weaknesses in the Queen's support. It's the wildest fantasy ever as an unprecedented force of fabulous female fighters, from elven alchemist to half-demon berserker, from undead pirate captain to dragon maid, all come together with the goal of stripping the Queen from her throne in Queen's Blade Rebellion. So of course, that's what I've been watching. I started it on the 1st of the 10th and finished it on the 6th of the 10th. Now, I will say I have been watching the Sentai Filmworks release, which I recommend because it comes with two soundtrack CDs as well. So 12 episodes, two soundtrack CDs, and of course some extras as well on the DVD. So definitely awesome, and uh, I recommend picking it up, obviously, if you like this review or if you fancy going for Queen's Blade. Now, Queen's Blade obviously is one of those shows that uh, people go, oh, really, Queen's Blade? Yeah, okay, fair enough kind of attitude or it's a oh, oh that's the one with all the fan service isn't it and yeah that's generally kind of the reputation that Queen's Blade has got you know I know that it has quite a big following because a lot of people love the characters and I will say to you there are some very lovable characters in this but generally that is the kind of reception that Queen's Blade gets so for me does series 3 actually do anything different because Queen's Blade series 1 and 2 for me despite having a very good storyline in it and it kept me interested I kept I was entertained and you know I sort of blew off the fan service but more enjoyed the fact that there was a very good gripping kind of thriller story going on in the background really like that does Queen's Blade series 3 deliver and the answer is Yes, to be honest with you, at first you feel like this is a bit slow and it takes a little bit of time to pick up pace and I was sitting there thinking, okay, I can't understand entirely what's going on at the moment. I was hoping that there might be uh, some more of the original characters from the first and the second series in there, but um, Queen's Blade Rebellion is all about these other new characters, these new characters that come to light as the series progresses and we then sort of do meet some of the older characters as the series again progresses but it's more about these new fighters and the first fighter we meet is Annalette and Annalette is like the main girl of the story in this one where um, she feels she hasn't got a place in her life she feels that like she's not done anything she wants to try and do something but she doesn't know what and gradually as she sort of goes through the series she starts to make friends she starts to realize that there is some stuff happening stuff she's not happy about and uh, then we see what happens once uh, things start to kick off which um, I don't want to go into because of spoilers but that's generally how this goes now obviously uh, being Queen's Blade the fan service is well and truly present in fact there are a lot of boob shots and of course there is the whole kind of icky tozen premise going on as well with every fight almost ends with one girl half naked um, now there are some scenes in here that I found that on the fan service side of things are fair enough you know it's fan service and then there are other scenes where I thought okay that's cringeworthy okay that's a little bit uncomfortable to watch okay that's some form of tentacle I kid you not on that and that sort of made me feel that uh, this was literally going on to the point of borderline hentai dare I say that it kind of felt like that which made me feel kind of not dirty as such watching but <laughs> made me feel a little bit again uncomfortable watching and kind of the fault in my mind was obviously 
if someone walks in and sees me watching this now, what are they going to say? And this, is, of course, is something that uh, we probably all think about at some point when we are watching these fan service shows. Is oh god, what if my mother walks in or my boyfriend or whatever? You know, <laughs> what are they going to think if they don't know that I watch these kind of stuff? So yeah, uh, to be honest with you, Queen's Blade, I was thinking, God, I hope no one walks in because this is generally not going to be very easy to explain, especially some of the scenes in there. Now, the animation for me was um, it's it's generally quite amazing to look at because it is up to date and as it's up to date there's a lot of use of CGI of course skin is glistening in the fan service scenes and it is very sharp very crisp and very bright and colorful to look at and that's what I like about this show it kind of pulls you in because of that feel of it being so vibrant that you can sort of be pulled into that universe and it's pretty awesome to be pulled in that way so I really really like the animation for this one I like the way the characters are drawn as well and of course you know this is one that uh, I feel that's quite a big franchise now and obviously um, the way that they portray the characters in this means that they can make some really awesome figures of them as well so if you are a figure fan then and you like Queen's Blade then you'll know that there are loads of Queen's Blade figures out there and of course there are now some Queen's Blade Rebellion ones as well now as for the music for me I found the music to be um, pretty good you know it's got some of the kind of instrumental pieces in there that I really like especially from series 1 and 2 um, but they sort of change it up in this one there are some that I recognize some that I didn't and uh, I found some bits of the music didn't really belong there and I found a sort of bit out of place but otherwise generally good opening theme is really really catchy it's really good heavy rock uh, tune that really sort of throws you into the show really loved it and the ending theme is just an excuse for more fan service um, in fact the ending theme consists of pictures of them sort of being half naked panty shots that kind of stuff so I was like okay generally of what I wasn't, uh, uh, well, I should say, what I was expecting from Queen's Blade. After all, look at Buddy Body for the end of uh, series two. So, uh, generally, if you do like Queen's Blade, then you are going to enjoy a series three because it is tense, it is thrilling, and it does lead up to a really explosive finale, which could lead us to a series four, which wouldn't surprise me because, like I said, big franchise, they can make a lot of money out of it. So, again, you know, if you like Queen's Blade then you're going to enjoy series 3 but if you haven't seen Queen's Blade then I suggest you go and watch series 1 and 2 before you go into series 3 because you might be wondering what's going on because there are things that they refer back to that have happened in series 1 and 2 but generally you know if you like fan service then this is very titillating and you might consider it to be the breast fan service show around I'll leave it at that and say on to the next show some guys have no luck. He's got no pulse. That's life for unfortunate undead Ayumu. First he was murdered by a serial killer. Total bummer. Then he was resurrected as a zombie by a cute little necromancer. That seemed pretty cool until she moved into his house, refused to speak and forced his rotting carcass to do all the cooking. After that a magical girl in a pretty pink dress used her matching chainsaw to chop his corpse in half. Luckily, the necromancer's powers of resurrection trump those of the chainsaw chick, so instead of dying, again, Ayumu became the world's first magical girl zombie. There's also a voluptuous vampire ninja who thinks zombie boy is a pervert, and a hideous crayfish demon who wants to devour him. Confused? All you gotta know is this. Zombies, 3D dresses, demons, and moe chainsaws. Pink is the new dead. So if you are still confused, I've been watching Is This a Zombie? I started it on the 6th of the 10th and finished it on the 8th of the 10th. Now for me, this was a good fun thrill ride to be honest with you. Now Is This a Zombie has got a reasonable storyline for it. We have uh, Yu, who, uh, Yu, I believe her name is, um, who is the necromancer and she's living with a Yumu who is a zombie so it doesn't matter if you whack him in the head with a baseball bat chop his arms off they will grow back or they will crawl back to him and reattach themselves to his body 
So he is a zombie and of course the only thing that uh, really does him in is heat which is quite interesting to watch him trying to get to and from school in the summer because uh, a lot of people seem to think he's acting very shady because he sort of goes along under shadows which of course being a zombie he has to keep himself out of the sun. Now what I really liked about this show was uh, just the premise of it to be honest with you because the fact that you've got this zombie living with a necromancer who then ends up living with the vampire ninja and also a magical garment girl as well it's just completely off the wall oddball comedy it has got a lot of blood and gore in this to be honest with you I was very surprised at just the amount of blood and gore that's in it but it bounces out quite nicely because it actually has a dark theme to it and even though it has got a dark theme to it it still has these great comedy moments and light moments that really sort of bring the show out make it a lot more fun to watch because you don't want to be sitting there watching blood and gore all the time and if you're a horror fan obviously you'd want to watch some horror but if you are looking for something that's you know a bit balanced then is this a zombie it's generally good fun and the good thing is is the characters as well are very easy to get on with Ayumu is generally a nice guy he wants to try and help out but he seems to be having bad times all the time and it doesn't matter what he does he seems to be somewhere in the wrong and he's always being called a pervert, a maggot, repugnant uh, so he generally doesn't live a very good life even though he is a zombie and technically yeah, he's dead but um, he just generally doesn't have a good time and of course uh, the other characters we have is Yu, and Yu doesn't really speak, but she's very, very cute. I love the fact that they've put a voiceover in this of when he thinks about her speaking. We have um, so random voice actresses doing voices for Yu, which is it's very, very funny. Um, we then have Sarah, who shows up, which is our uh, vampire ninja, and she generally quite a nasty piece of work to be honest with you. She doesn't like him, she calls him repugnant and uh, she generally is not a very easy character to get on with but you can see a kind of changing as the series progresses. Haruna is the other one who shows up and she is your typical Tsundere. Literally, she has the whole leave me alone, don't touch me, hentai, stop looking at me, stop doing this, stop doing that. Um, and yet she still got the same kind of yeah I like him kind of kind of attitude so yeah for me I found this series to be quite a good watch to be honest with you. very good fun indeed there is some really really good hilarity moments that will have you rolling on the floor in laughter for me the final episode there is a moment in there where I could not stop laughing I had tears rolling down my cheeks it was that funny so I definitely definitely recommend it for that now the actual animation um, there's a lot of use of CGI as usual but I like the fact that it changes up um, now and then and you'll see that uh, in some scenes uh, it's a certain style and in other scenes it's another style um, I like that kind of aspect because that kind of keeps your show fresh so I really like that idea and the music as well works quite nicely very nice um, original soundtrack uh, some really good little comedy sort of happy t tunes in there we've also got some nice uh, rock music as well a second to last episode uh, a rock concert uh, which really is pretty cool and we've got lots of cool rock music going in there so that really sort of helped to bring out the original soundtrack and of course the opening is actually really awesome as well uh, very very catchy and the ending is very very awesome as well and the animation for the ending is very very funny so all in all is this a zombie uh, season one is what I watched I found it to be a very very good watch and I definitely recommend it and it is a highlight of this year so I will leave it at that for this one but I will say that I am definitely going to pick up season two when it comes out I will make that a priority because it is definitely again a real good fun show to watch and I highly recommend it so that's all we've got time for for this video, so stay tuned for the next Race to 100 October video which will be on Dead Man Wonderland, so I'll see you for that one. Thanks for watching, sayonara.